Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program and I'm finally going to be saving my lost Kerbals on EVE. Now last video I put the return ship in orbit and also used a plane to fly all the Kerbals together. In this video though, I'm going to be designing and delivering the ascent vehicle and hopefully wrapping this all up. So let's get right into it. Now starting out in the sandbox here, the first thing I wanted to work on was the top stage of my ascent vehicle and for that I'm starting out here with this large command pod. Unfortunately I have to use this really big one because I need to fit all three Kerbals in it. So once I had that down there, you can see I put on a nose cone, put on an engine, and I've after that, I put on some docking ports. Now this is so I could dock with the return ship once I got up into orbit. And also to help with that, I put on some RCS thrusters. Now that was pretty much all I needed for the top stage, so with that, I started working on the bottom stage. I put on a really big fuel tank, and after that, I put on a mammoth engine. Now I needed an adapter to get it to look right, but once I had that on there, the next thing I wanted to do is add on some solid rocket boosters. These are really easy to attach to the side, and I figured they could be a really easy addition to get me up into orbit. Now with those put on there, you can see I went to the launch pad, but testing this on Kerbin isn't actually that helpful. So I used some sheets to teleport myself to EVE so I could start doing some testing. Now, of course, I'm not going to be taking off on a perfectly flat launch pad anymore, so it's a little harder to keep things upright. So I decided to try this again, but this time I launched immediately so that I couldn't fall over, and it wasn't a great launch here, but I did eventually get myself pointing upward, and I started burning up. Now, one thing I was noticing is that my solid rocket fuel boosters weren't really helping me all that much. The thing is, the atmosphere is so thick that they really don't produce that much thrust anyway, and I also had some minor stability problems once I got up high enough. So I started out by deleting my fuel tank and actually adding an even bigger one on, and once I did that, I also had added some landing gear. This was that once I was touching the ground, I wouldn't just fall over, and you can see here after that, I gave it another test. This time it is a lot better. I'm not going to the side or anything, I'm just going straight up, and I also seem to be accelerating up a lot faster. You can see the atmosphere really pulling me down here. It's really hard to fight this, and after not too long, I ended up running out of fuel and going to my top stage, and this proved to be not great. I flipped over immediately and I knew I was gonna need to add on some fins. So I did in a couple here and I wanted to give it another test. Now launching off this stage, it did seem to be better for a little bit. I also replaced the engine with a slightly more powerful one, but after not too long, the same problem happened and I ended up flipping over again. So I did on a couple more fins and I hoped that was gonna solve some problems. And after that, you can see me adding on another fuel tank to the bottom and one to the top as well. I wasn't really close to an orbit at all at this point, but I figured if I added on some more fuel, I should get pretty close. And you can see now with four fins, I'm a lot lot more stable up here, and I'm starting to build up a small orbit now. Now I seem to accelerate a little bit too quickly at this stage too, because I ended up just blowing up the nose cone, and that was definitely not ideal. But it did tell me, since I had so much extra thrust, I could realistically add on another fuel tank, and once I did that, I gave it another test. And you can see this time I almost got an orbit. I'm about a thousand meters per second short, but really that's pretty close. So I added on another fuel tank to the top, because I figured, why not? And after I did that, I also used some more adapters in the bottom to give my Myself more fuel. This is also to improve the aerodynamics a little bit, so I figured this would be a pretty good way to go. Now with all that done, you can see here, going for another launch, and I'm definitely going a lot slower this time. And also, you'll notice when I launch off the top stage, I start losing speed for a little bit before I gain it again. This just tells me that I pretty much have the maximum amount of weight on that top stage that I possibly can, and I really can't add any more fuel tanks. This is unfortunate though, because I still don't have a full orbit. Now I knew I needed to save weight, and the best way I could think to do this is to get rid of my crew capsule and add on some seats. The seats are going to be quite a bit lighter here, and if I use a fairing to cover them, I should be saving quite a bit of weight. They also use some minor part clipping to double up the bottom stage here, and this should have a lot more power. And you'll see as I take off here, I really do need it, because I'm going so slowly at the bottom here. Realistically, this is kind of horrible. Once I get up a little bit higher, my engines produce a lot more thrust, and I'm a lot better off. And you can see here at about 17,000 meters, I drop off that bottom stage and start the top one. Now, once I get out of the atmosphere here, I also deploy the fairing saves me a little bit of weight, and my orbit here is not really an orbit yet, but I do have about 2,600 meters per second to delta V, and that was about as much as I was gonna need to get into orbit. So once I got up high enough, I started to do my burn here, and I just wanted to get in orbit as a proof of concept. Now you can see there, I got a periopsis, but I was still dipping a little bit into the atmosphere. So I extended it out the last little bit of fuel I had, but it still was just slightly in the atmosphere. So I used my RCF thrusters to just push it over the edge, and I would be concerned about that, but the place I took off from was actually only a thousand meters above sea level, but where I landed with all my Kerbals is about a thousand four hundred, and that extra four hundred meters doesn't sound like a lot, but that should give me a huge head start, and I figured I definitely had enough fuel now. now I also noticed I added on some ladders here, and this is so I could get all the way to the top. Now, they didn't show me adding all of them, because there was quite a few to get in place here. Now, it's actually important to test this stuff on EVE and not Kerbin, because I have had the extra gravity cause problems sometimes, and not allow me to get up the ladder. But you can see in this test, I'm able to get all the way to the top, and to actually board the seats, you only need to get pretty 
pretty close to them. So once I got up to the top, I was able to right click on the furthest seat. And you can see here, I ended up boarding it. Now with all the testing out of the way, finally I get to start the main mission here. And that's to get this rocket all the way to Eve. And I was considering a lot of ways to do this, but the best way I could think of was to launch the top and bottom stages separately. So you can see here, I added in a very simple probe core. And after that, I added in my big rocket. I got rid of the top stage and I attached the bottom stage directly to it. Now to get this up into orbit, I wanted to use solid rocket fuel boosters since they're so easy to add on. And also I can pretty much just keep stacking them on the side as much as I need. Now with two rings here, I had quite a few boosters. And after that, I added on some fins at the bottom. And after that, I added on one extra stage. This one was going to be just ion engines. And the idea here is if I needed it to get to Eve, I at least had a shot of doing it. But the main goal was just to get a stable orbit. So with that in place, I added on a lot of solar panels to feed the ion engines. And after that, I added on a plate to couple this stage to the bottom. Now after that, you'll actually notice I'm separating out the two stages quite a distance here. And this is just to give me a little bit of extra clearance to make sure the ion engines were producing thrust. So I decided to give it a test. And of course, as per usual, I forgot to turn on auto strut. So things didn't exactly go well. So I tried it again after doing that and it was better, but it was still a little slow off the launch pad. And I figured this might be a problem. I continued anyway to test everything else out though. And once that stage ran out, I launched the next one and I saw some explosions, which was probably bad, but nothing that I cared about seemed to be destroyed. So I decided to just continue on here and I tried building a full orbit. Now I ran out of fuel a little early here, but I did still want to test out that top stage to see if it produced any thrust. So if I launched it off here and you see, I actually am pulling away from those boosters and I am in the atmosphere. So it's a little hard to tell, but I was pretty sure there was some thrust there. Now in the vehicle assembly building, I added on even more boosters to get me into a full orbit. And with that, I wanted to give it another test. This time it was a lot faster off the launch pad. And you can see now I just had to launch off those boosters again. Everything seemed to be fine and I continued building my orbit. Now I had to do some really awkward maneuvers to try to build this out. And fortunately I was a little bit short of finishing it up, but I figured maybe the ion engines could do it. So I launched them off here and you see I actually am producing a pretty good amount of thrust. And eventually my periapsis just started to appear. Now it seemed to be building quite slowly, but fortunately I had quite a bit of time here. I got it all the way up to about 64,000 meters before it pretty much stopped going up anymore. Now, fortunately this was high enough that there was pretty little drag. You see my apoapsis is coming down very slowly. So everything should be good. So I just warped around again and I started to do my burn. And you can see now I just got it over 70,000 meters and that was all I needed to get a full orbit. Now this still doesn't solve the problem of how I'm getting to Eve. And to do that, I want to send up another fuel tank, dock with the bottom stage and then send that entire thing over to Eve. Now to get this up in orbit, it was actually very similar to how I said the bottom stage. You can see I attached this large fuel tank. I added on a lot of RCS thrusters and also a lot of mono propellant. This was hopefully to make it a little bit easier to dock with that stage. And once I get everything attached here, I added on a lot of solid rocket fuel boosters. Now it looks a little ridiculous on the launch pad, but it did seem to perform reasonably well here. And you can see shutting off that first layer actually wasn't half bad. I was somewhat expecting it to just completely explode, but it seemed like nothing on the rocket actually got too damaged. And in fact, this seemed to be a little bit too good because I can't really shut off the solid rocket fuel boosters and I didn't want to shoot them off the rocket. So I ended up extending on my apoapsis quite a bit too far, but I figured it should be okay. And I still should be able to dock with the main stage. Now, after I extended out my periapsis, so it was just above the atmosphere, you can see I dropped off my mammoth engine. And after that, I just needed to dock. Now, fortunately, I'd already set everything up to line up really well here. So I just had to wait for the bottom stage to come into view. And with that, I just slowly worked my way towards it. And for not too long, you see here, got a pretty good dock. So with this all ready to go, I waited for a transfer window between Eve and Kerbin. And with that done, I added in a maneuver here to send myself off. So I started to do my burn here. You can see, escaping Kerbin. And now I'm coming in towards Eve. Now I originally set the periapsis to be about 83,000 meters. So I figured going in that deep should be really good. It should allow me to get a lot of arrow breaking in. And by doing that, I should save a lot of fuel. Now, unfortunately, I got in a little bit further than I was hoping for. And the atmospheric effects were getting kind of extreme here. Things did not go particularly well. And everything seemed to fall apart. So I gave it another test this time, but I only dropped down to about 87,000 meters. This allowed me to get fully captured, but I was still in the atmosphere. So I should be able to do some aero breaking. So you can see just warped around Eve again. And I just started dipping into the atmosphere to cut down my orbit. Now this took an unbelievably large amount of times going around and around because I couldn't dip in too far or else I'd explode. Now eventually I got it down to about 5.7 million meters. And I decided just to take it at this point and wait until I get the top stage to do anything else. Now next I was gonna need to get the top top stage Eve, and you'll notice it looks a little bit different. This is because I was messing around adding some heat shields for the descent. It took a lot of tuning, but I figured it'd be a little bit more fun to show you guys once I actually get into the atmosphere. So I ended up covering the entire thing with a fairing to help me get out of Kerbin's atmosphere. And
And with that done, I added on some extra fuel tanks here and an engine, and this will hopefully get me all the way to Eve. I don't really want to do any docking here, so I'm hoping I could do a straight shot all the way there. Now you'll see me here adding in an antenna, and after I do that, I also added in a probe core to the other side, and with these in place, it was time to give it a launch. Now getting off the launch pad, it seemed to have a lot of power, and I was pretty confident I was going to get all the way there. So after those boosters burned off, you can see here I'm going to the mammoth engine, and after this, I pretty much just escaped. Now it was slightly inconvenient because I accidentally got an encounter with the moon. This didn't really matter, it just made it kind of hard to plan things out, but after that was done, you can see me exploding the fairing here, I thought it looked pretty cool. Now I ended up getting an encounter with Eve here, and after I did that, I started to fall in. Now I'm actually going pretty deep into the atmosphere, but since this has all the heat shields, I figured it should be okay if I need to slow down. So once I wrapped around to the periopsis, you can see me here just get in orbit, and I'm actually not pulling it in too far. This is so that I can improve the efficiency of my next burn, and that's going to be to match the orbital plane to the bottom stage. Now it was still a pretty expensive burn here, but fortunately I had quite a bit extra fuel left, so I finished that up now, and with that done, it was time to warp around again and start to do some aero braking. Now finally here, you get to see my system for the heat shields. Basically I just have to inflate all of them, and after that I extend out these hinges, and they're all going to rotate out, and that should slow me down. Now the only reason this works is because you're able to lock the hinges in place, and this prevents them from folding back under the extreme forces they're going to have in the atmosphere. But with all those locks here, you see I'm dipping in, and I'm getting a little bit heated up. Should be fine though, and I'm making a lot of progress in pulling my orbit in. So I looped around a few more times here, and you can see I pulled in my orbit a lot further. In fact, this attempt is actually going a little bit too well, and I had to fold back my heat shield, or else I was probably going to fall in. So after I finished that up there, I did one last burn to pull me out of the atmosphere, and this should set things up pretty well. So with that in place, I switched to the bottom stage here, and it was time to do a lot of aero braking. It took probably about an hour, but I finally got it down to something that was at least reasonable, and with that done, I went back to the top stage, and it was time to try docking. Now the reason I'm doing this with the top stage is that I have a little bit more fuel left in this, and also it seemed to be a little bit more maneuverable, so it just seemed to be a better option overall. So I started out by extending out the orbit a little bit to match the bottom stage, and after that, it was just a long waiting game to get them really close together. Now once I had a separation of 8.6 kilometers, I figured I could work with this, and with a small bit of maneuvering, I got that down to 1.4. That was close enough that I could pretty much just brute force it and get my way there. So I just did a small correction burn here, and after that, you can see we're getting a lot closer to that bottom stage. And here, way off the distance, you can see it just coming into view. So I just did a small burn here to get myself to match its speed, and after that, I just got in a lot closer. Once I was pretty much there, I undocked from the bottom fuel tanks, and also on the bottom stage, I ended up undocking from the top extra fuel tank I added. Now all there's left to do at this point is to match them together, and this took a long time because I wanted to conserve a lot of RCS fuel, but eventually here I did get them connected, and it took a long time for them to shake out properly, but finally here you can see, they're one ship, and I'm ready to land. Now, I started out here, I extended out the heat shields again, because I knew I was definitely going to need them soon. Now, you can see here, I pulled down my periopsis to 86,000 meters, and I figured this would be a pretty good starting point to dip in. I didn't want to pull it in too far, because I am using the fuel in the bottom stage, and I'm going to need as much of it as possible to get back into orbit. Now, this actually isn't quite deep enough to get me there in one shot, so I had to go around twice here, but the second time I dipped into the atmosphere, I was starting to fall in. Now, I also had an interesting problem here, where when I tried to dip in, I forgot to retract the antenna, and that caused some minor problems here. Now, it was easy enough to retract that, but I also noticed when I was dipping in, I was landing really far away from where the Kerbals are. It seems like I didn't dip in quite far enough here, but I still wanted to test out the landing and see how it would do. Now, I'm going to save the process of falling into the atmosphere once I actually get it right, but you can see here as I start to go into the terrain, it actually seemed to be okay. I wasn't tipping over, and if I could do this right at the launch site, I'm going to be in really good shape. So I tried pulling in the periopsis to 84,000 meters, and with this, I wanted to see where I was going to land, and it seemed to be quite a bit too short now. So I tried again, and this time I think it was around 85,000 meters, and you can see I'm getting a lot closer to where I need to be. Now the further I dip into the atmosphere here, you can see things get quite a bit more intense. Now my main engines were also heating up a lot here, and I was getting a little worried they might overheat. But fortunately they didn't seem to do that, and after not too long I was going under 1,000 meters per second, and I was pretty much safe. But I also noticed I was like right on top of where the Kerbals are, and in fact as I started to fall more and more, I was going to be landing almost directly on top of them. Now, I don't think I could have asked for a better landing site here, so I started to fall down, and I was gonna go for the full landing. Now, this took a long time, so I have a lot of parachutes, and the atmosphere is really thick, and as I started to fall down here, I did touch down, but I'm on kind of a large slope, and this caused me to just barely fall over. Now, I tried again from 700 meters, and I figured maybe I could do some stuff to help me out, and the first thing I did was dropped off some of these heat shields, but sometimes they would run back into the rocket, and then caused me to explode. So I had to be a little bit careful, but you can see 
see I left one. And this one's actually pointing uphill, and I'm hoping it pulls me back a little bit. And it did seem to do that for a little bit, but eventually the rock has started to turn here, and then I sort of just fell over. And as a last ditch effort, I actually try to get it with only two landing legs open, and these are pointing downhill. This, though, was not a great idea, because the engine couldn't really take the force. So I tried again from a lot higher up, and this time I just started randomly cutting parachutes and also moving around erratically, and I was landing a little bit further away, but at least this time I was on mostly flat terrain, and I seemed to stick the landing. So I ended up switching to my plane here, I waited until day, and I started to fly over there. Now I landed 3.2 kilometers away, which is pretty much nothing, and you can see here it was a very short flight. So I just stuck the landing, and after that you can see me landing right next to the rocket. Now I can only drop off one Kerbal for now, because I do need one to pilot this all the way back, and if that Kerbal off, it's time to try getting up the ladders. Now grabbing on here seemed to be fine, and I started to work my way up. Now even the spots where I docked the rockets actually did seem to work out fine. It took a lot of maneuvering to make sure they're at the right point, but I noticed somewhere up the top stage, I was getting stuck. Now fortunately, it was a pretty easy fix, I just had to hold left as well, and for whatever reason, that got me up the ladder. And once I got all the way up to the top, just had to make sure to board a seat. And now that I'm in here, I actually have the option to decouple stuff again, so I got rid of these two extra heat shields, and with that, I got back in the plane, and it was time to fly back over to my last Kerbal. So I see, boarded the seat, flew back over to the rocket, and with that done, it was time to try boarding. Now the next Kerbal got in just fine, ended up getting all the way to the top here, and I boarded right on. And now I just had one last Kerbal to get in, and she grabbed onto the ladder fine, but for whatever reason, she just kind of refused to get up past this point. And I couldn't really figure out why, because all the other Kerbals got in, and I tried extending ladders and contracting ladders, but nothing I did seemed to help. I even cheated her partially up the rocket to see what would happen, and she still just got stuck on this part of the rocket here. So I couldn't really figure out what was going on, and it just seemed like a really weird glitch. So I decided to just use low gravity to get myself under the rocket here, because whatever was going on was just not quite right. Now of course, this wasn't ideal, I wasn't hoping to turn on low gravity here, but fortunately it was a pretty easy solution to the problem, and I had all three Kerbals loaded up. And with all of them ready to go, it's time to launch away. So I launched off here, and I'm actually launching from about 1,500 meters off sea level, and it's a lot higher than I was doing before, so in theory this should be a lot easier of a launch. And things seem to be going fine at first. The bottom stage seemed to be going up pretty much as high as it was before, but when I launched off the top stage, it seemed to be quite slow. But I didn't really think too much of it, because it really was already a test of design, it should just work. And as I started to extend on my orbit here, I noticed I ran out of fuel very early. I wasn't anywhere near an orbit here, and I was a little bit concerned about that. Now I tried doing the launch again, and I figured maybe the problem was that I accidentally had my rockets going a little bit too fast, and I was wasting a lot of fuel going against the atmosphere. So I just tried this again, and it did seem to be a lot better of a result, but I still wasn't anywhere near an orbit, and this was kind of confusing, because I specifically tested this. And at this point, I only had a couple theories. The first one is that the weight of the extra Kerbals was causing problems, but the weight isn't really that significant, and I also removed weight, and also since I'm starting higher above sea level, all these things should counteract. But there was one thing I realized. All of these extra parachutes I had on were the only thing I didn't have on before. And I had legitimately done research and tried to figure out if they had weight, and as far as I could tell they didn't, but that definitely wasn't true. So unfortunately, I did have to remove these here. Now I really didn't like doing this, but the thing is, I could have easily put them on a decoupler and launched them away, and nothing would have changed about the rocket except that it would have worked. And also, considering I'm removing something and not adding something, I'm a little more okay with doing it. Now this launch already wasn't going very well, so I was hoping to just get into orbit here and finish this up. Fortunately, things seem to be going way better this time, and I had plenty more fuel to get into orbit. Now let's get up to the epilapsis, start to extend out my orbit again, and you can see pretty easily here, I did actually manage to get a periapsis, and that nearly completed my orbit. This is a little bit of tuning, got down to 90,000 meters, and you can see popped off the fairing here, and it was time to dock the main ship. So I launched off a decoupler here, and after that, I did quite a few maneuvers to get really close to that top stage. Now you can see coming into view here, and once I started to get close, all I wanted to do was roughly match its speed, and I actually don't have the ability to dock with this at all, but I can EVA the Kerbals and slowly use their jetpacks to get over to the hatch. It was easy enough to do for this first Kerbal here, and I ended up boarding, and I did it for the other two as well. Now with all those Kerbals loaded on here, all I have left to do now is get home. So guys, thanks for watching. I really can't believe the amount of footage that I had to cut out of this. Just a lot of failed attempts here, especially that heat shield system took forever to get just right, but I was really happy with the final design, and I thought the whole thing looked really good too. So if you have any more ideas for Kerbal Space Program videos, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and otherwise, until next time.